So Mike, you're a pastor. Tell yep. us what you do. I'm an assistant pastor in New Life Assembly in Petrolia. And you've got a brother who's in the ministry. Tell us about him. Mm -hmm. Jeremy Costco. He is a uh, lead pastor at Bethel Church in Trenton, Ontario. You know, the story today really illustrates evangelism. And we've pointed this out so many times that if one person reached one, and we did it just six times, we'd evangelize the entire world. 100 Huntley Street did that for your family. Take us back to when your mom was a young mother and she turned on a show called 100 Huntley Street. Mm -hmm. Well, um, about 35 years ago, um, we have a family of five, and uh, as we were young children growing up in a northern community, uh, South Porcupine, Ontario, um, my mom was searching. She was searching for more spiritually. She was hungry, and she turned on 100 Huntley Street program, and she responded that day to a program and gave her life to Jesus. She became born again. And in that community, not known to her, there was another lady who had a similar experience. This other lady, her Christian sister had been praying for her. She'd been through a car accident, was in recovery, and recovering at home, watched 100 Huntley Street and gave her life to Jesus. My mom met this lady at a meeting, not knowing her, and this lady described to her what happened, and my mom looked at her and said, that's the same thing that happened to me. And then this lady explained how she's going to a woman's Bible study to grow more in the Lord, to, to get closer to Jesus. And even without being invited, my mom said, that's what I want to do. Can I come with you to this Bible study? And that's kind of how it all began. For her. And so what about your dad? I mean, what happened to him? Uh, my dad, well, my dad at first wasn't really, uh, wasn't really a Christian, uh, but he was, he was a little bit open to what was happening. Um, my mom first started going to a new church. It was the uh, Pentecostal Church in South Porcupine, Ontario. Um, it was a little bit stressful for extended family. Uh, not everybody was really uh, understanding about what was happening. So there was a little bit of stress as my mom started to go and took the kids to the kids program there. It did cause some problems, but at a certain point in the journey, my father uh, kind of stood up and said to the extended family, even though he wasn't going to the church, even though he wasn't a Christian at the time, he said, listen, if my wife wants to go there and take our kids, then that's, that's up to them. And that kind of ended any problems and, and just, just kept the door open for them to grow and for us to hear about Jesus. You know, our viewing audience needs to be reminded of just how many people come to faith in Christ through 100 Huntley Street. I mean, some people call. But as I learned a long time ago using media, many people receive Christ and never call. So only God knows. So 35 years ago, so your mother then began to teach you. How did it go from her uh, new birth to your call to ministry? Mm -hmm. Well, we began to attend this uh, South Porcupine Church. And through the kids ministry there was the first time I was introduced to really who Jesus was and the idea of a personal relationship with Jesus. And that's how uh, I first responded. And growing up, we were, we were continuing to attend a Pentecostal church even after we moved uh, down to Southern Ontario uh, to Listowel to a Pentecostal church there. And I, through different circumstances, as, you know, as I experienced Jesus in that church and through people's lives there and through pastors, circumstances that happened to me in high school really just led me to that decision that I felt called to minister full time uh, just to help other people find Jesus. And then what about your brother? Mm -hmm. My younger brother, Jeremy, uh, similar experience that uh, he gave his life to Jesus through the experience of the church that we were involved in and felt called into ministry. Uh, and, that, and he went to Bible college and, and now is a pastor and serving in Trenton. Yeah. One of the viewpoints of David Maines and Huntley from the beginning is to be a friend to the church. And our call center regularly calls church after church after church to to connect people who are calling here nearly a thousand a day to God's uh, place of growth, the, the local church, the ecclesia, the called out ones. Uh, you see, don't you, the harmony between a media ministry like First, uh, like Huntley and your church. Mm -hmm. And they work cooperatively, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Invaluable. I mean, to have a ministry like Huntley Street where um, sharing the gospel through media uh, everywhere into homes, into people's lives, and then the partnership of the church, a place where they're discipled, a place where uh, they, they may be able to, they can see people face to face who are serving Jesus and have uh, spiritual leaders as well that can help them on that journey. 
And then something happened with your wife that I, I found quite interesting as I read. Uh, uh, an accident and something was on the right floor mm -hmm. of the... Mm -hmm. We had, uh, God did, a, did a, uh, a work for her when she had an accident. We were first married, living in Peterborough, she was working. And uh, coming home from work, she had a head-on collision with a pickup truck. And uh, as a result of really a, a sleep disorder that she ended up being diagnosed with. And uh, God spared her life, spared the, the person who was driving the truck's life as well. But I remember when, after God had spared her life, and we went to go see the car that was totaled at the wreckers. And I remember going and seeing that, being so thankful to God, and looking in the car and seeing on the floor of the driver's side of the vehicle, all we saw was a Gospel of John, a copy of the Gospel of John that was called the Book of Life right there. And that just spoke to us how God had spared her life. Do you mind me asking you what kind of sleep order she had? Mm -hmm. Disorder? Yeah. yeah, she has uh, narcolepsy. Uh -huh. Yeah, she doesn't get like a proper deep sleep. So, so that's something that uh, has been a challenge, but the Lord has been so helpful and faithful uh, as we've journeyed together in ministry that, you know, she's just a, a blessing. It, just in the few moments we have left, Crossroads is really focusing on the family. We, we just see that the family is in such great need and the strength a strong family provides. I mean, it can get you through anything when everything's against you. Mm -hmm. In your ministry, what are you seeing with families and young people? I just, uh, I would agree that the value of having support, and I know nowadays not everybody has a, a two-parent family or even a family that maybe they can feel supported. But the value of a family that you have is so important. It's meant so much to us. And we talk about my mom and my, my father who are still around and my, my uh, siblings as well and, and my wife Christine and our kids and how much the support is there and the church is a family too. That, you know, if you don't have, maybe you don't have a father and mother around, maybe you don't have all the sibling support of family, but the church is also there as the family of God to help you. Mike, thanks so much for sharing your story. And let's be reminded today of the vision that God gave David Maines, the founder, to take broadcast ministry, boldly present the gospel, as he said so many times, and today again, yet another trophy of grace because you faithfully stood with us. That prayer line is always there for you. Mike, tell your mom and your whole family Thank you for sharing and uh, keep us in prayer and come back and see us again, okay? Thank you so much.